Hello everyone, and welcome to another Company Heroes 2 replay cast. My name is ATR, and today we're going to have ourselves a 1v1 on Kolodni Firma. Our heroes today are going to be Storm Tiger Trafalgar, playing as the Germans in the blue. And his opponent is going to be Storm Tiger Fako, playing as the Soviets of the Red Army. So, both Storm Tiger members, you can see right there. Yay! Uh, so it should be good. Should be good. So let's see what's going on. So for um, for Trafalgar, we have uh, Tier 1 going down, as you would normally expect. Opening up with two Pios, which is, you know, not bad or anything, but not too common. So interesting. Getting two Pios out very quickly to be able to, you know, get map control a little bit more easily. And uh, bringing out a Grenadier Squad as his first unit from Tier 1. Second, uh, well not second, but uh, for um, for Vako, we have no tech, as you would expect, and he's getting conscripts, two conscript squads out in the field already, both of them heading up to the north, as we see the Pios splitting up, one heading up north, one heading down south, and the Grens are now out on the field for Trafalgar, and well, we shall see where he decides to go for that. Now, uh, I guess while the uh, game gets underway, I could talk a little bit about the players. We have Trafalgar, uh, rather good. He is, well, his Soviet uh, play is ranked 90, so top 100, but his German is rather far behind at 483. It looks like he doesn't play too much German, so it's kind of his off uh, faction. That's what he's playing right now. Only 70 games to his name at this point, so not too many. And uh, for Fako, uh, we have him in the 600 range for the Soviets. So I suppose they're kind of even in that sense, but well, they're both from certain Tigers, so we should have a good match. Anyways, conscripts up in the north, they are trying to secure the munitions, and they do, while one of them lays down a uh, sandbag. The other one is, well, engaging. We have two Grenadier squads coming in to engage, and a Pioneer squad pops into the house to add some additional support fire in front of them. The Pios, well, actually, it wasn't two Grenadiers, it was just one Grenadier and one Pio. The Pios close the distance, trying to get right on top of the conscripts in the sandbags. However, the Pio squad does get rather beaten. Grand squad at full strength decides to retreat. Might have been a uh, misclick as both squads might have been selected there at the same time and forced to retreat. Second Grand squad comes into the field to follow up the engagement and is now duking it out against the conscript squad that decides to close the distance outside of its heavy cover and ends up getting mauled there. Down to two men, forced to retreat. A third conscript squad now on the field for Fako moves up, gonna throw a moth off into the house. The Pios are gonna pop out of the house. The Grens move into the sandbag, using them against the conscripts, but the conscripts close the distance, get right on top of the Grens, and the Grens are forced off of the field. A very nice early engagement here for Fako, ends up winning that, and we see the Pios just disengaging and going up to the far north. Down south, combat engineers for Fako just capturing territory. As we see more conscripts getting produced with a fourth conscript squad, you know, being built. We have a mortar squad on the field for Trafalgar. Interesting choice. I mean, he is, uh, well, I mean, it's interesting. Not, not exactly sure why he would get a mortar at this point. Conscripts are the only thing he has seen. And generally speaking, it's kind of hard to hit conscripts with a mortar because they are rather mobile. So... If you see MGs, you know, then the mortar would be kind of cool, but I mean, it's still going to help out. Don't take, don't, don't take me the wrong way, but you know, it's kind of a weird choice. Anyways, conscripts move up here to try to cap the uh, strategic point, but they, uh, actually they do cap it, so I'm not sure what I'm trying to say. Anyways, uh, they get forced away by the Grants. Uh, two Grants spots coming up against one conscript spot. The conscript spot will lose. <gasps> one of the Grants is down to two men, however, and the mortar is shooting in there. It's kind of a... The dangerous situation though as the Grens are in the range of fire of the mortar. Ooh, almost got hit by its own mortar shot. That is one of the uh, uh, dangerous situations to be with a mortar on the field. Mortars is going to shoot unless you're, you know, manually uh, firing them. They're always just going to shoot at the uh, enemy infantry regardless of whether they're on top of your own infantry or not. So it could be quite devastating if uh, it hits in the wrong place. Uh, excuse me, take a little bit of uh, drink there. So we have three Grand Squads, a Mortar, and now an MG42 getting produced for Trafalgar. Uh, we got Faco with only four Conscript Squads, and he is building something somewhere. Mines getting laid down down south, so very nice. And we see a lot of Grands moving up in the north, not really uh, opposed to anything. Pios are going to run into the Conscript Squad that goes cap the, uh, the victory point. 
Pios will lose the engagement very easily. Down goes one of the Pios as the rest of the men of the squad try to run away into the safety of the Grens. The Grens are nearby and they're going to be able to support. Down south, Combat Engineers continue to cap as we see a concert squad moving into the center. The Mortar is currently in the center, going to be opening up on the Combat Engineers. The Combat Engineers not getting hit just yet. And we do have the MG42 on the field coming in for Sara Falgar. We have no textures yet. We have uh, conscripts in the center. A Pyo squad was lost up in the north, it looks like. Yeah, Pyo's died over here. Conscripts took a little bit of a beating, but they uh, ended up winning, and the Grenadiers didn't make it out, but the Pyos were not so lucky. Mortar squad in the center did take also a bit of a beating down to two men, forced to retreat. We see a bunker getting laid down for Trafalgar. Obviously, that would be a med bunker. Uh, so it'll be nice. His uh, infantry will be able to come back out at full strength. But right now, Faco is just dominating right now the uh, the map. You can see here that more than half the map is currently in his control. He does have the... Uh, uh, well, I guess I shouldn't say lesser, but the uh, less numerous uh, army, as he only has four conscript squads and a combat engineer. The uh, MG really being the, uh, the crux here, as it will stop the conscripts uh, in their path. And there it goes. One conscript squad moves up to capture the point and gets stopped by the MG42, forced off of the field and being ineffective. Conscripts back here capturing points, conscripts up north capturing the fuel. And we have tier two going down for uh, Faco. Let's see if he builds anything from that or is just using it as a stepping stone for tier three or tier four. Tier two is a popular selection if you're gonna be going tier three because it gives you the option for AT guns. Still no doctrine selection for either player. We shall see what they go for eventually, but so far it is an open game. Conscripts moving down south. They do engage against the Pio squad. The Pio is forced off of the field and the Conscripts will recapture the point. And aside from that, and this squad up here, there's not much else on the field right now for uh, Faco. MG42 runs straight uh, into a uh, Conscript squad in those sandbags, gets shot up, loses one of its men, and moves back to set up in the heavy cover of the logs. However, the Conscripts are long gone. They are moving up to the north to engage the Grunt squad that is capturing the point. More Conscripts and Combat Engineers just uh, moving up to the north. Big flood there. Conscripts over here in the southern or center side are retreating. They are at full strength. But, uh, well, we'll see what happens there. Do we have medics back at base? Yes, we do have medics back at base for Faco. And he decides to select his doctrine, and that is the Soviet Shock Army, and gets himself a, uh, a shock troop squad. So, very nice. Combat Engineers up in the north, running into the MG-42, getting suppressed and forced off of the field. The MG-42 now using the... Uh, sandbags that were laid down by Faco against him. Nice precision there, although he does not have the benefit of heavy cover because he's a little bit to the side of it. It's still going to be uh, quite useful. Conscripts decide to disengage and move up to the north to capture the victory point, while another Conscript squad with PPSH is now equipped is moving in that direction as well, trying to force an engagement, trying to make the Grens move in that direction as the MG-42 is behind it. The MG-42 not being brought into the fight. The Conscripts are just sitting in this point. Conscripts up in the northern point get their own PPS agents and are going to try to close the distance. However, those are two Grenz squads that are having to fight against. Molotov does get tossed right on top of the Grenz. The Grenz will have to move out of the way. Nice Molotov forcing one squad off of the field and the other one forced to backpedal, losing one of its men. The Conscript still has three men going to hold the ground and stay on the field. Down in the center, well, I guess, well, yeah, it was down in the center. But in the center of the map, we have the Shock Troops forcing away, what was that? Pio squad? No, not really forcing it away, it's just backpedal. But we have Grands moving up. They do take down one of the shock troops, but they are forced to retreat themselves. Pyos jump into the house, and the mortar is on the field. But, well, that is uh, not going to be for long. Nice grenade into the house. Kills one of the Pyos. No, two of the Pyos, in fact. Down to one man on that Pyos squad. The Pyos squad needs to retreat, but it's going to retreat through the path of a shock troop. The mortar squad is retreating, and the shock troops are just going to sit there while the Pyo is caught between uh, a rock and a gun. Now, uh... Uh, conscripts down south, capturing territory. We see Garen squads moving up north, trying to push off the uh, shock troops, and they manage to for force them away. So the Pio squad remains alive and is now able to just simply retreat and head back home. It's not even going to retreat. It gets emboldened by what's going on here, and there it goes. Tier 2 now down for uh, Trafalgar, getting himself his uh, scout car. Scout car, very nice choice, as there is only Soviet infantry on the field right now. So that will help him out. He does not know of the presence of Tier 2, however, so that's... 
something to keep in mind. However, it's still going to perform rather well. Grenadiers engaging the conscripts down south with their PPS Sages. The PPS Sages not helping them win the fight, uh, you know, too easily. So they end up having to retreat. Nice rifle nade on top of the conscript squad. Only kills one, damages the rest, and forces a retreat. Scout car gets upgraded with its auto cannon and it's just shredding the conscripts as they try to retreat. Not really, because they're still alive in five men regardless, but they did take a lot of damage and now down to about half health. Combat units retreat as well, and the scout car unable to really seal the deal or do anything, and is now, well, on the field and will help out, but well, we'll see. I mean, last game we actually saw a scout car that has pretty much stayed alive the entire game. But, well, we shall see what happens with this one. Conscripts moving into the center. The MG42 is still defending up in the northern point. Conscripts up in the north capture the fuel point, and Ura towards the scout car trying to catch it to get an 18 8 off on it. However, Oh, they actually did get in range. Nice nade toss. Gets on top of the scout car. The scout car takes damage on the engine and is now down to about 25% strength. The conscripts are getting uh, pretty beaten here by the uh, scout car itself. And the MG42 gets turned around down to three men. They are forced to retreat. And the scout car stays on the field. We do have conscripts also in the center. They took a nasty rifle nade there by the Grens and are down to three men themselves. They are trying to chase down the scout car. That is not the uh, best of choices. MG42 gets turned around on the conscripts and the conscripts are forced off the field. A little bit greedy there by Fago. He was trying to just desperately get the kill on that eight, on that uh, scout car, but he did not manage to do so. Shock troops on the field, moving down. They're gonna get a nice flank there on the MG42 as the MG42 is looking in the wrong direction. MG42 decides to just simply abandon the uh, territory as it cannot hope to turn around in time to get right on top of the shock troops. The shock troops taking cover in the uh, heavy sandbags, or the sandbags, I should just say. Uh, getting some heavy cover. Conscripts Ura forward trying to catch that scout car. That's the six-man squad followed up by a shock troop squad and two more squads behind that. Another conscript and a combat engineer. We have another 18-8 going off on the scout car. The scout car taking a lot of damage down to about 20% strength maybe at most. Conscripts and shock troops still alive. The scout car is, however, able to back off into the safety. Well, not yet, but near the safety of the MG or base sector MGs. So I think it should be fine. Does not have a destroyed engine. It's just a simple en engine damage, and it's fast enough to get out of there in time. So it is now in the actual range of the fire, so he'll be fine. Nice big push there by Fako. He decides to retreat, however, without capturing territory. Not entirely sure I agree with that, but he didn't want to get uh, beaten by the uh, mortar. Mortar doing quite a bit, doing a lot of damage and getting two kills. And down in the south, the Grand Squad is just capturing territory by itself. Back at base, still nothing from Tier 2. We see a Combat Engineer Squad building something, and that was probably a mine. Yeah, a mine set up in the other side of the sandbag. Very sneaky, very nice. That will probably hit something there. Maybe something like the MG42, although the MG42 is being used in the center for uh, Trafalgar to, you know, secure this location. And that's about it. <laughs> bit of a lull in the fight. We do see that down south we have troop movements. Conscripts moving down south. They're going to run into a Grand Squad. Grand Squad will not be able to withstand this as the Conscripts will get right in front of them with PPS Aegis, so they decide to retreat immediately, not risking themselves getting uh, shot up and potentially killed. So uh, one squad is going to go for the victory point. The other one will ignore the munitions, and it looks like it's going to go for the strategic point up north. Scout car moving down south, although it's actually just moving into the center. MG42 pushes up as the Grenz go for the cutoff point. Shock troops moving in to try to stop the Grenz, but it is being supported by an MG42. The uh, shock troops do, do manage to stop the... Uh, well, not stop, but... Uh, uh, well, yeah, I mean, essentially stop the decap for a bit of a second there as the Grenz move out of the way. However, well, they uh, cannot help to... cannot stand there by themselves for a long while, and they end up engagement and retreat and then the Grants just decap the point. Victory point has been taken though by Faco. He does have the uh, the lead in victory points. He is at 488 while uh, Trafalgar is down to 243. So Trafalgar does need to get a lid on those uh, on those victory points uh, sometime soon. He still has a lot of time but you know that's a uh, an over 200 point lead so something that you should be giving your opponent that easily. Pyo's moving into the center, engaging the uh, the conscripts. The conscripts now getting shot up in every direction. They're having to run straight into an MG42 as the MG42 turns itself around and try to see... No, it actually just moves out of the way. I thought it was going to turn around to try to see if it could destroy the uh, squad as it retreated. It was down to two men, but it made it out. 
One total millimeter mortar now in the field for Faco. He's gonna have a lot of range and firepower with that one. Let's see where he shoots. Grants down south, retreating as the conscripts go to recap the point. Up in the far north, the conscript squad retreating down to one man. They did manage to molotov off a grand squad that is sitting on that point. We see several men there just pretending to be alive. One of them was alive, but he ended up burning as he just sat in the fire a little bit too long. So a nice little uh, free win there for uh, for Faco. As Trafalgar was a little bit distracted and did not retreat his squad up in the north. I doubt that sitting in the fire was part of his... Uh, Thought process there. MG42 moves up to cover the strategic point. Conscripts were already there capturing it. They run up to the MG42, losing one of their men and getting suppressed right in front of it, but they are in range for a more. No, they actually get pinned down, so no Molotov gets tossed. And there you go. Tier 4 now down for Faco. He gets himself an SU 85, anticipating some type of vehicle play for uh, Trafalgar, but Trafalgar doesn't actually have anything just yet, not even a doctrine selected. So, I mean, really the only thing that that AC-85 can shoot at is the, uh, the scout car. AC-85 moves up to the north. AC-76 would have probably been better in this scenario, but, I mean, it is understandable why the AC-85 would be built. Because you're thinking, well, he hasn't brought out a tank just yet, so we're probably going to be bringing out a tank. So anyways, scout car in the center, getting some shots off on the mortar and concrete in the house. Nice shot there on the scout car. Scout car down to a sliver of health. Can he actually make it out of there? SU-85 is turning itself around. The scout car is trying to circle its way around the house. Will be able to circle around the church and stay alive. That's a very lucky scout car. Scout car is surprisingly uh, resilient <laughs> in, this, uh, in this patch, even though they're not meant to, but they live a lot. MG-42 getting shot at front by the SU-85. The SU-85 managing to nail one of the uh, members of the squad. But we now have a pack on, on the field for Trafalgar. And Trafalgar will be able to force back that SU-85. Katusha getting built by Trafalgar. Katusha is falling a little bit out of favor right now between players. They don't seem to think that they are accurate enough to be worth it. SU-85 sitting in the range of fire of a pack gun gets shot twice. Faco still not moving it. Ends up getting shot three times, but the third shot actually missed, so he is fine. But a little bit of unnecessary damage there on the SU-85, and I don't know why I toggled the fog of war. And the Katusha is now on the field for Fako. Very interesting. Back at base, still nothing being built, considering the amount of fuel. Actually, we do see that... Ooh, at Battle Phase 3. So it looks like uh, Trafalgar is going to be skipping his Tier 3 and going to go straight into Tier 4. A very good choice, considering that he has now seen the uh, SU-85. And while Panthers can, you know, kill an SU-85 if they uh, catch it out of position and outmaneuver it, um, the Panther has a much better shot at actually doing that. And even on a head-on fight, just head straight into the SU-85. Takes tank some shots in front of it and then get behind it. Scout car moves behind the lines and gets right next to the base. Maybe it was trying to scout and see what the uh, enemy had in the base. He does see tier two, so that may have been conscripts. Get an 18 8 off on the scout car. The scout car is just getting shot up there by the uh, PPS Aegis. It's doing a lot of damage to the squad, but it, it, it itself is down to very low amounts of health. Looks like it's going to make it out of there just barely. Once again, the scout car staying alive. That has got to be a pain in the ass for uh, for Faco. And there we go. Conscripts moving into the center. Pack on force to back off. We have a lot of troops up in the north. That's Grand Squads and Pio Squads. The Pio Squads will be repairing that car that is now Veteran C3 with 11 kills to its name. And it's just not going to die. Katusha throwing a barrage up to the north. It's going to see if it can maybe catch that uh, scout car. Here comes the barrage. And... Not seem to me like that's actually going to get hit at all. Nearby shots, but you can see that the Dakatusha didn't actually do anything. I mean, it did get three kills, so I won't say anything, but nothing of worth. Conscripts moving down south. Conscripts moving all the way up to the front of the base of uh, Trafalgar. Even the shock troops being utilized to get right in front of the base, keeping those units at bay. 
We do have that uh, Katusha, but the Katusha has thrown his barrage up to the north. The SU-85 is moving into the center, and we have uh, tier nothing? No, nothing just yet. No additional buildings. Shock troops just wrecking the Grants as they push forward. Nice grenade on top of Grenadier squad down to two men, forced to retreat. The uh, shock troops themselves do get quite battered, down to three men, forced to retreat, and there they go. Panzer Grenadiers now on the field for Trafalgar as he uh, gets a little bit more infantry power on the field. He does know that there is an SU-85, so, I mean, it's understandable how, why he would be reluctant. Katusha Barrage, though, flying straight into the base of Trafalgar. Is it actually going to hit anything? No, it's actually hitting just near the point. If it had targeted the uh, exit of the base, that actually would have been amazing. But as it stands, everything is just flying wide. A little bit of scatter shot does a little bit of damage there, but the Katusha is actually going to be going down. There it goes. Nice little pickup there for uh, Trafalgar. Moves his scout car behind the lines and gets that Katusha kill. Very nice move. Combat engineer in the center. She's getting wrecked by everything. Forced to retreat down to one man. Makes it out of there alive just barely. One total meteor mortar is on the field. Constant Fun will die. It's not going to make it out of there, although it did actually get... No. Yeah, it was too low in health, but that almost made it out. One total meteor mortar actually hit the uh, MG42, killing the gunner, forcing it to take time to switch out, and there it goes. We see an IL-2 strafing run right on top of all the infantry. Does a little bit of damage to the troops. Only kills about two, two or three maybe. But uh, it does force a retreat from the, uh, for the forces, so I suppose a little victory there. Scout car is on the field, and that uh, strafing run will actually target it eventually. Scout car will try to take some shots at it, but it's only going to end up getting itself shot back at. Strafing run coming down the top of the scout car, and down goes the scout car finally for the IL-2 strafing run. Big mistake there by Trafalgar. <laughs> yeah, boah. <laughs> Probably going to say whoa or something like that, but yeah. At last, <laughs> says Paco. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was tired of that scout car. And yeah, I mean, big mistake there by Trafalgar. He knows that the strafing run is, you know, they call it the skill plane. It just lingers around so much and does a lot of damage. These Panzer Grenadiers are in big trouble. Here comes the uh, strafing run right on top of them and annihilates them. They shouldn't have been in the center. But, well, sometimes you think, oh, well, I mean, I, I can probably just ignore it now. But there we go. Anyways, we see a Doctrine selection for Trafalgar and does the Fortified Armor Doctrine, calling himself a command tank onto the field. Command tank will help out against uh, the infantry, but not too much against the SU-85. Needs to be rather careful. SU-85 will eat the command tank alive. It'll just, like, you know, shit it out later, but whatever. Ah, excuse me. Another Katusha on the field uh, for uh, Faco, replacing his lost one. He has also an AT gun getting produced from Tier 2, so finally utilizing Tier 2 for something. Command tank up north. Catches the uh, shock troops. Shock troops are forced away. Command tank again is, you know, it's okay against infantry. It'll kill them, but it's not anti-infantry itself. So you can see the shock troops make it out alive just fine. Conscripts moving forward, almost getting run down by the command tank. They uh, could get an 18-8 off on it, but it does not look like they are inclined to do so. And they retreat. Down to five man, but they'll make it out. Pioneer squad nearby. Center map, we see a grand squad pushing forward. Oh, nasty shot there by something. What was that, actually? Is that the S-85? No, that wasn't the S-85. Probably was the mortar, I would assume. Katusha Barrage flying into the center, forcing squads to retreat. Grandier squad retreating and managing to dodge the rockets. Make it out alive just fine. And we do have a pack gun down in the south that went to capture the victory point, as the victory points are now down to 131 for Trafalgar and 441 for Faco. Trafalgar needs to step it up or he is going to lose. He does capture two points, though. So he stopped the bleed and put the bleed in the direction of Faco. But Faco still has a lot of troops and, well, technically speaking, I guess you could say the vehicle superiority. SU-85 beats the command tank and he still has a uh, rocket truck <laughs> on top of that. Down south, Grants engaging conscripts. The conscripts are vanilla. The Grants are veteran C1. Rifle lane on top of the conscripts, down to two men, forces the retreat, and there they go. And we see the command tank actually coming into the fray, trying to kill the conscripts, and it does pick up a kill on the conscript squad. Nice pickup there for uh, Trafalgar. But uh, I think that was a vanilla squad, so not too big of a deal, but it's kind of annoying. 
Katusha Barash getting tossed again straight into the center. Troops in the center, she's managing to dodge the rockets without any real problems. And even the command tank moves into the center to get some shots in. Pack gun moves up, gets a shot off on the uh, AT gun. I mean, not the AT gun, the mortar. The mortar could be able to shoot back at it. Conscripts pushing into the center. They're going to get crushed here by the command tank. The command tank doing a lot of damage here to the troops. Forces a retreat, and there they go. G42 was set up at a nice angle as it manages managed to catch those squads as they were moving forward. And the command tank isn't really being hunted right now by this SU-85, which I don't particularly agree with. We do have an AT gun up in the north. Stops that command tank in its tracks, gets some shots off on it, although it decides to not shoot at it for quite a while. Not sure what was going on with the AT gun. And the combat engineers are forced to retreat. The SU-85 still sitting in the center, waiting for some other vehicles. And even though we did get the upgrade for Battle Phase 3, we have yet to see Tier 4 down for Trafalgar, so not entirely sure why he went for the upgrade, but we'll see. I mean, I don't think he's going to be waiting for an elephant, is he? I mean, he kind of has enough, almost enough fuel for an elephant, so maybe he will, but if he was, then why did he get, I don't know, uh, whatever. I mean, sometimes you adjust on the fly depending on what was going on, but most of the times you at least want to get something out of your investment. So we'll see. Securing our territory. SU-85 still in the center. Mortar getting turned around up to the north, getting shots off on probably this Pio squad. Pio squad retreats, so it makes it out. And Katusha Barrage into the center. Hits the uh, MG-42, killing one of its men, but that's about it. And nothing else. Yeah, nothing else gets hit. The Pio retreats through the blast and makes it out just fine. Grand Squad moves up, getting some more damage in on that uh, Mortar. The Mortar down to one man needs to retreat and get the hell out of there. It does hit retreat and gets the hell out of there. The uh, Shock Troops moving down to the south. And we have the SU-85, or a second SU-85 on the field, now going down to try to intercept that Command Tank. The Command Tank is being defended by a Grand Squad. The Grand Squad will move up to get a foul stop on the SU-85. SU-85 will get created on the engine, there's no doubt about it, but the Grenadier Squad will die as Conscripts with VPS agents are right on top of it, even with a Combat Engineer Squad. No, it's going to make it out. Wow, that is unfortunate there for Trafalgar, I mean for Faco. As Trafalgar retains a better C3 squad, that would have been a big blow for him. Elephant does get called into the field for Trafalgar, so that's going to deal with all the SU-85s. Shots fly up into the north as Conscripts are trying to capture the point. We do have that SU-85 on the field. The SU-85 will not die to that, it does look like, but the, uh, the elephant is looking in that direction. Down south, Grenadier Squad running into the shock troops, forced to retreat. Still have that Katusha nearby, and the elephant is around. The SU-85s can't really do much against the Elephant as it outrages them and outdamages them. Elephant moves up. Looking right now at the SU-85, it looks like. And the SU-85 makes it out of there without any hits. There you go. Another Rile 2 strafing run. These Grens are in a lot of trouble if they don't move out of the way. The Elephant is pushing forward. The Grens do cap the point. Here comes the strafing run. Is actually going to go for the Elephant or the other guy? Actually, no. It went for something over here. Not sure what it went for. Elephant moves up, SU-85 trying to stop the Elephant, gets shot right in the frontal armor, taking massive amounts of damage, the Elephant is now just going to kill it. We do have a flanking AT gun on the Elephant, getting some nice damage in on it. It does not have a lot of uh, armor on the side, at least. Frontal armor, I think, is pretty good, but... AT gun, unable to shoot at the Elephant, the Elephant continues to run away. We do have the Command Tech nearby, and the IL-2 strafing barrage comes... I think it might have actually hit the elephant, but it doesn't do too much to it. Command tag moving down south, the Grenadiers recapturing territory and fuel. Up in the north, the SU-85 is still sitting there with some conscripts capturing territory. And the uh, AT gun is sitting in the center as conscripts get caught by the MG-42. 
and the elephant's just adding on top of damage there with the command tag on top of them. Nasty shots on top of the infantry, down to two men. Get, needs to get them out of there now. Down to two men. Ooh, nasty armor shot, or side shot there on that Panzer IV. Panzer IV pops in smoke. The AT gun is still on the field. Can it get some shots off? Nice rear armor hit on that Panzer IV. Can it kill it off? We shall see. SC-85 moves down into the center. Moves uh, in an awkward angle as it is unable to finish the deal. Does get a shot off on the command tank, but it will die in the next blow here by the elephant. Elephant misses. The command tank stays alive, but there it goes. Kills it, and the elephant is set about half strength. Nasty barrage there by the Katusha, hitting right on top of the elephant and the uh, MG42. Shock troop, I mean, conscripts are uh, going to get killed here by all the Grins. They did not retreat, and now they are dead. They suffered for their insolence there. SU-85 getting repaired back home. Katusha is still on the field. Shock troops and conscripts are coming out of the base, but right now you can see that the army value is a lot higher for uh, for uh, Trafalgar. Command tank quite damaged, getting repaired down in the south by some Pios. Grenz moving down south to engage conscripts. Conscripts down to one man, gonna get killed. They're not even gonna be able to retreat. They do hit retreat, but they die. Mistake after mistake here for Faco. He's just falling apart at this point. Does have uh, Trafalgar down to 97 points, but he himself is currently getting bled, or well, ticked against. 384 points in his name. He could just essentially take it easy and uh, go slow, but I think he's getting a little bit greedy here and trying to seal the deal quickly, so he is taking a lot of damage. Conscripts moving up, getting stopped by the MG42. They are suppressed, they are in light cover, so they may be able to stave off the pain down for a little bit, but they won't win the engagement at that point. Grand's moving down to decap the uh, strategic point. Up in the north, we have mortar being utilized to cap as Grand's move around again to cap. New Grand squad coming onto the field there. Mortar, SU-85, and AT gun pushing forward, supported by the Katusha. Nice little combination there, but it's not. It doesn't look like it's a combination that's going to help him push too much. Elephant in the center getting repaired, but it's going to take a while. The uh, command tag is now back to full strength. Conscript down to two men retreating, but they're going to have to run through an LMG. The LMG is just going to rip them to shreds at a distance there. Barrage goes off, and whoa, the Conscript actually makes it out of there alive. A landing on top of the Grenz, forcing them away. Shock troops down to one man, barely make it out of there alive. And the SU-85 is moving down to the south. May actually be able to catch that command tank. Command tank is moving back now. SU-85 slowly moving in its direction. Unfortunately, it has focus sight, so it's not able to move very quickly. So the command tank makes it out of there alive. Katusha Barrage flying once again into the center. Just trying to hit whatever it can. It does hit uh, the uh, MG42s a little bit, so that's not too bad. Maxim Machine Gun on the field for Faco. Runs into the MG42, so it does not help him too much. Command Tank just pushes forward and is going to go for the kill on the Katusha. The Katusha is a sitting duck. The uh, AT gun is trying to turn itself around. And we see... Actually, no, the Katusha stays alive. SU-85 turns itself around, getting some shots off on the Command Tank. The Command Tank trying to decrease the AT gun. AT gun taking a little bit of damage. Command Tank now veteran C2. Can he make it out? SU-85 is... No! Oh, well, AT gun finishes the deal. SU-85 actually missed. Command Tank crashes into the hedge and makes a little bit of heavy cover there for the uh, Soviets. Faust goes off on the uh, SU-85 down south, getting uh, the engine damage, and the elephant is still on the field. The elephant does not manage to get a kill on anything, and the AT gun moves back to get some reinforcements. More command tanks getting called onto the field for Trafalgar. And there we go. Mortar up in the north retreating. And we see that Faco has been reduced to a very small amount of territory. His SU-85 moving in awkward angles. Just going to get itself killed. Trying to back off right now by the elephant is too strong. Takes a shot and down goes the SU-85. And now with nothing on the field to stop it, I think that elephant can just simply roll into the base and kill all buildings and everything. Elephant still on the field, turning itself around, exposing his rear armor to the enemy. Or mooning them, maybe. I'm not exactly sure what it's trying to do.
turns itself around, gets a shot off on something. Katusha Barrage once again into the center, not actually doing anything. Katusha itself only has 12 kills to its name, better than one. We did lose one Katusha at one point, but even then, still hasn't been too effective. Command tank pushes forward. Again, nothing to stop it. We do have an S-285 that has just come onto the field right now, so that may be able to stop the command tank. The AT gun getting uh, flanked by the command tank. A little bit of trouble there. S-285 takes a shot at the command tank. Command tank taking some damage. AT gun looking in the wrong direction. Needs to turn around once again. The elephant getting some damage on that as well. AT gun does manage to get... Well, actually, no. Nice smoke getting popped there by the command tank. Breaks line of sight in the AT gun. Just needs to get merged. It does get merged with the Conscript Squad, and the Conscript Squad will retreat to reinforce. Katusha is still on the field. A victory point still at 97 for uh, Trafalgar. And Faku has been bled to 243. Currently triple cap, so that's going to go very quickly. So Faku is in a lot of trouble now. That elephant is going to be a big problem. And I don't know that he has any way to deal with it anymore. Elephant is still d damaged. It's at about 75% strength, but it now has ample time to actually get repaired. So it'll probably be just fine. Grand Squad down south, capturing the fuel. We see a uh, Maxim machine gun popping into the house to try to stop it. LMG opening up on the squad. The Maxim machine gun will open up eventually, even though the men at the uh, window ended up dying. So that's unfortunate there. And the uh, SU-85 moves into the center. Elephant throws a shot off at the uh, at the AT gun. And we see a Katusha barrage flying in the southern direction. Hitting the uh, Garens that are... No. Hitting here. Ah, I'm not sure where it's targeting. Anyways, Conscript's forced to retreat. The Maxim machine gun did end up dying. S-285 still on the field. The AT gun looking in the front. Mortar on the field. Maxim machine gun once again pushing back out. Conscript's combat engineers. Grenz, AT nade the, uh, I mean, rifle nade the uh, AT gun. The AT gun loses its crew. And that opens it up so that the elephant can actually push forward if he wanted to. Command tank still sit, command tanks sitting up in the north. Readying itself for a little bit of a flank. Looks like it's moving down south now to actually get the flank. Conscripts and combat engineers push forward. They run into the MG-42, end up getting themselves forced off. Maxim machine gun in the house. GG, says Afako. Trafaga throws out the GG. And I don't think there's going to be much else that happens here. As the SU-85 goes up in flames, that signals the end of the game. And that is all she wrote. So anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the game. If you have any positive or negative remarks, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you have any replays you want to send me, go ahead and send them to the email that I will put in the description. But otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.